Welcome back everyone to Old World Blues, the ADC series in which we're playing right now as a Chichen Itza. But we gotta talk about the reintegration motion. It can be said with a fair amount of certainty that the land held by the Tierra de los Tzotzil is our rightful land, and their people are our people. We must bring the Tzotzil territories under our control and our government, even if it's at the risk of diplomatic conflagration. After all, what sort of nation would we be if we cannot adequately care for our people and our land? Because we want to call them, Lordy through fear. With the pretender government of Tierra de los Tzotzil disposed of, we must not consolidate our control over their territories and people. Though considerably depopulated Tzotzil lands, a full-scale military occupation must be enacted, along with a show of force, after all. To get the Tzotzil into place, we must first remove anything which doesn't fit. Investing in Tzotzil. With the Tzotzil, Tzotzil is not firmly under a sphere of influence, we must not consider how to better make use of the land and the people. Some oversight investment will allow us to bolster the industry in the area and improve its value to us, but the problem of Gueros de Honduras. Our relationship with the Guerreros de Honduras has always been complicated. Whilst they do important work in keeping our southern border, and by extension most of Mexico, free from raiders flooding up from Central and Southern America, they also sell their services to our enemies. On more than one occasion, a battle that should have been on an easy win turned into a lengthy slog thanks to the rival Honduran mercenaries. Therefore, it might be worth enforcing our political dominance over them to ensure their fighters never work for enemy hands. Alternatively, we could enter, attempt to enter a military alliance with the Guerreros de Honduras, ensuring that they can continue to fend off raiders without the Atzlam or any other player to get involved. Leaving an independent state on the border of our heartland is too great a risk. Rook is admirable, let's offer an alliance. We can try to offer an alliance, we'll see what they say. I don't want to be just full conquest on this one, but mostly full conquest. Loyalty through love. Nope. Further the fleet. If we're to become a greater power and exert our might upon those who rival us, we must have supremacy at sea just as we do with land. Our ships must be improved from the hulls we use to our methods of staffing and arming our vessels. Expand the merchant navy. For increasing our presence at sea, military ships are quite vital. However, if we plan to make proper use of our naval supremacy, we must operate a civilian fleet as well. The rapid construction of new convoy ships will allow us to further make better trade, and ferry trips across protected waters aid in our waters. Or aid in our wars. So, we didn't do it. We can't do this one. So, we're the allies. <clears throat> the Gueros are mighty in war and peace, having both a considerable standing army and powerful, decisive leaders. We cannot expect to simply subjugate their peoples, and we. Oh boy. I uh, can't consider the option of going to war when they're trying to establish peace on our border to begin with. A mutual arrangement is likely the best option, surely something we can achieve with time. Yeah, why not? They want this one, huh? They love attacking that one. So we'll see if we can hold off. Uh, someone else will be poor for next year, which kind of sucks, but whatever. Uh, we'll see what happens with that one, and that one, and that one. Marriage of strength? Probably not. Well, it could be in a faction, but they're not our leader. Invest in Honduras. <laughs> we'll see. Uh, the land of people of Honduras are of great use to us still. And bringing them into our sphere of influence should be involving optimizing our returns. The Honduran landscape is quite vast, bristles with jungles, uh, and slipped by great mountains. What's more, uh, the current infrastructure is woefully underdeveloped. Navigating their lands and using their resources must involve a period of development, which with new roads being constructed. Yeah, why not? I just can't wait till we can edit our own divisions. My god, it sucks. But we're still building some infrastructure, eh? Oh, they're attacking us too, huh? Can we promote the node? Yes, uh, we can. I release a winning here. That would be a fantastic. And we have a cup of lemon ginger tea to keep us nice and warm. Excellent. Excellent. Can we do it again? Yes, we can. Looking pretty decent for this one. Beautiful. Now we haven't attacked them, but that's all it does. I want that person to lead us there. Would be pretty nice. Um, Chief of the Navy. I think accept an alliance. Following the days of haggling over policy detail, the Honduran leadership has agreed to an alliance between our two great nations. As per the treaty, we will provide support in the form of munitions and men against raiders from the south. In exchange, the Hondurans will provide their men and expertise should the outsider come knocking on our doorstep. All this agreed without bloodshed. A toast to new Honduran friends. Beautiful. Look at that. We have an ally now. We could have taken them out, but we didn't really need them. But, you know, whatever. We'll take them. Can you make a couple more divisions here and there? Not bad. Eh, maybe one more. Because we need to cover up tracks down there as well. Any ships? We have only 15 extra new ships. Nice. Ah, no more purged bureaucracy. Very good.
Pretty good. Nice. What is it but another army? Last time, so we're gonna do that one real quick. If we need to train, go and train. It's fine with us. Um, yeah, I really don't know which one we want to do there. Uh, complete adapt to new ideas. Up and coming bureaucrat. Well, I guess we gotta do this one. Because we already got this one military academy training. Legendary warriors, naval stuff, light ship manufacturer, way less production costs. A little more production costs, that's fine with us. You know, projects. Some better resistance trucking and whatnot, because that'll come in handy later on. And also do all these. Spend the merchant ships. Question the odds of the line. Where the lands and seaboard is being more well secured than they were, we must consider further in the interest of a consolidated nation. The Atsalan have been a thorn in our side since time immemorial, and if we're truly progressive to the people, we they must be taken care of. It's not time for all out war, but we must consider every action to a prelude to such measure. Awake and angry. All of our progress, all of our strife, all has been for this. We've had a state of danger already, but nothing will compare to what we must do now. Our military is consolidated, our southern and eastern borders is fortified already. Now it's time to expand into Mexico and become the empire we so truly deserve to be. And then, of course, expand the status quo. The economic system employed by us before the Columbus injury worked well enough. There's no need for drastic reform or drastic expansion. Civilian construction brigades. We both lack industrial capacity and have a large urban unemployment problem. We kill both these birds with one stone by simply drafting unemployed citizens to construct various things for us and develop power stations. Or, what was she doing? Yeah, this one. The power is the lifeblood of our nation. It is both drives and machines and pacifies the people. We should expand our distribute distribution. Distribution. Distribution stations around the country. Oh my goodness. What now, feelers? Well, the Atsalan and ourselves are frequently at each other's throats. Not everyone in the Atsalan Corps feels that our ancient fuels need to continue. Indeed, there's a sizable faction within the Atsalan, the Eagles. We see us as the lesser of two evils than compared to the Lock in the North. If we make the right con contacts and the Eagles have sufficient influence within the government, maybe to end these tensions permanently, but at what cost? Okay. That's all I say. It's just okay. Ah, but we can change roles. Changing roles around. Certain elements of the armed forces have been profusely disloyal and indeed, indeed in need of a shakeup. The basic structure of the force, however, does not need to change very much, of course. But we're coming over here. We should probably got anti take a while ago, but we're going to go grab some dynamite first. Because I threw them on our infantry, but we're not really doing that well with them. Did you learn anything? You being dumb? Being stupid? Well, I don't know if we can actually win this one. If we do, that'd be great. If we don't, I'm not going to have high expectations. Uh, grab some anti tank. The infantry's got to do a little better. Uh, we're making some radios, which are pretty decent as well. Um, you know what? Since we we'll combine them later, anyways. Uh, there we go. Why not? Yeah, we're struggling here. Mr. Struggler! Californian Way. Oh! The NCR has fallen into one heck of a civil war, haven't they? Reading. Well, maybe not a civil war. Maybe they're not. Well, so, well some of them are. Defeat outside the hands? Well, that kind of sucks. Resume military duties. Change and rolls around. So we gotta wait for this one. So we need to uh, open the Mexican Technical College, because civilian production, extend conscription, as well, or, or, and or, and really, increase naval capabilities, establish a college of military affairs, standardize armored drills. Um, we can do other research slot down here too, that's pretty great. Reform them. Regas the Azurcito. Interesting. It's awake and angry. Open the Mexican Technical College. Oh, civilian production extend conscription. Civilian production. Oh, there's civilian production. So we gotta go through here quite a bit. Oh boy. That's gonna take quite a while, ain't it? <coughs> Spell them. Naval bases. New division template. We're gonna buy our teams. It's then Marine Corps. Remove that. Landing arm crafts. I really don't mind getting that other research slot if we possibly can. Oh, remove the little units. Oh, whoa. Remove Meadoras destined for the scrap heap. The Mer Mero de Adoras are truly partisans and obsolete. The only possible solution is to dissolve them. 
Uh, and then try to build a new Marine Corps from the ground up. That would be really nice to have done. Whoops. I should have completely scrapped them. Crap. We're going to form them still, but expel the Azure Seat to the borders. While the decision to reduce Azure Seat to the border control was made soon after the end of the power struggle, it's yet to be implemented. Now it's time to do it. Finally, the secure regime against a possible coup. Gain two levels of outposts. Days of ways. What a grand day. Uh, what a grand day. Uh, break the Azure Seat's hold. I should have done this one before. I should have went with the other one, but. Uh, Break the hold on military production. For quite some time now, the control of the military industry has fallen to the Azure Sea Tool. With tension so high, I cannot allow an autonomous and possibly traitorous force have such a control on the military. Let may cause strife for some. The factions must, see, must be seized from the Azure Sea Tool and returned to, control, to the control of the state. That's because we can't get that one. Established a college of Army Military. Uh, ooh, oh, God. Uh, military Affairs. Military science is a vast following art, so we should be ensured that we have a specialist dedicated further to the field. The work may even have knock on effects in other aspects of our country. Dilute uh, Azure Cito's leadership. The line of command inside Azure Cito is refined and efficient. While this system is great in time of total war, it concentrates immense power in the hands of the old guard during peacetime. By diluting the chain of command somewhat and placing little officers among, among, it, among it or along it, we uh, might be able to significantly reduce the power of the old guard and raise local militias. One ten with Foza Militia Division at 80% strength is raised. Well, the notion of a cohesive unified army is an exciting one. There are some factors that impede the creation of such a thing. Though we may have our major population centers, a great many of our people are laborers scattered amongst the less developed portions of our nation. For military to succeed, it must take an appropriate use of our local levies and defensive forces, though they may lack the skill and equipment of our more refined fighters. And now, scavenging the wilderness. <clears throat> many generations have passed since the American occupation of Mexico, but the remnants of the U.S. Army's presence are still relevant to this day. Abandoned equipment vehicles and settlements have always been landmarks for people, but have the capability to be much more. Though much of what was left behind fell, fall into disrepair, there's no shortage of old world components to be found, both advanced and simple. Repair main roads. The older population is relatively well dispersed throughout the various provinces of our nation. Some areas are more well developed than others. But we're to consider expansion of any kind, we must first dedicate time and resources towards the goal of a, uh, of a system where of roads which connect all provinces. Many major highways and footpaths have fallen into disrepair and must be developed to meet this goal. Now we're awake and angry, but civilian production. As the scavenging operation grows, their settlements grow ever more connected. The use of civilian labor must be thoroughly considered. With no shortage of hardworking men and women available, we should allocate resources towards the end and goal of furthering our civilian industry. The development of the homeland relies on it. So you notice again, please, I read it. Um, recruitable population factor, attack defense, just by war goal goes way down. Uh, tariff imports. Oh, and compared. When commerce of any kind is introduced to our nation, we must take into consideration how to best benefit from it. Regardless of the state of our nation, some portion of our industry will always be dedicated to the trade of consumer luxuries. Though we may alienate some of our attentive partners to do so, we must allow this capital flow back to into ETSA through the taxation of non-essential goods. Also, I forgot um, that... Oh, we're not winning, but whatever. That's pretty normal. Uh, we're pretty pr pr primal, so I need to go back and do it, this one up here instead. So, hey, we actually won. Look at that. We finally left. We're again one. We got Mexico City, but yeah, I'll come back and do a scavenging tools instead. My bad, I forgot about it. But you to full, my friends. Uh, what are you, what are you doing up here? Nice. Um. Sure, why not? Unless you're training, get some more training in. Got plenty of political power now. Deal with the Epsilon. I kind of want to deal with them. I really do. For all the pragmatism that we have brought our nation, there's one issue left too. Uh, too personal. Uh, too close to personal. As we grew in power and influence over the Epsilon world, always gnashing the teeth and standing too close to the uh, precipice of yet another flower war. And bringing our age old nemesis to their knees, we'll find the cement place as the true rulers of Mesoamerica. I think that'd be a great thing to do. Support, uh... I already have most of that there, so... Uh, there you go, there you go. We still need to cover this tile just a little bit too, but which kind of sucks, whatever. Y'all, oh, you're the wrong person for this. There you go, that's better. We have these guys in here too, but I'm not going to call them to the war. Tariff imports. Deal with them. Destruction. We've opted for destruction. Diplomacy. Uh, that's fine. Tahun is not already married. 
loose corn in Mexico, upon the frontier for hundreds of years. The pesky has on horror to the west have plagued our borders. Though the numerous clashes and free infrequent wars, many lives have been lost on both sides of the border, and many settlements have been wiped from the map by marauding armies. No more. The time's come to end the Otsan threat once and for all through diplomacy or destruction. Never more must there conflicts with the Otsan threat or peace, no else we shall not be able to expand north and east into the lands anew. They must be crushed. Destruction. A war without Islam was never a question. Some of those among us, we've always been at war without Islam. We're bitter enemies, forever doomed to bully one another into action. Regardless of how lukewarm the conflict has become, we must bring the full might of our new Islam empire down upon the Islam. It's an empire down upon the Islam. War on the board is inevitable, though it seems certain no one will protest. You probably honestly, you know what? I'm going to do something I've never done on this channel before. We are going to use anti air in our divisions, because I can already tell some of our enemies. Are going to have quite a bit of anti air. So we need to research that if we can. Uh, we pour. Whatever. Looks modern, huh? There you go. Because we can, why not? Y'all attack us in some lo key locations, but whatever. There you go. Destruction. No choice in the matter. Completing this focus gives us access to the war with the Atsalan subtree. We should have seen it coming. It's only natural that our enemies would move faster than the pace of our leadership. Those not our plan to divide, dry, dive headlong into such a vital war. We must do so. We've always done an adapt. We must move forward and strike decisively and finally bring the peace of our nation. Well, 80% strength. is raising every core state. Yeah. This our production is nice. Well, we'll save first. And let's go to war, because we still have a navy to think about, too. So, hey, we'll see. Maybe it'll go well, maybe it won't go well. I don't know. I'm just here having fun. Sometimes. Hopefully that's enough of a navy to help, like, not die to them. But, you never know. Where the trade node is, which is good to do. That's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Where are you at here? You're pretty darn spread out, huh? Now these guys are actually 20 combos, which is pretty decent overall. We ran out of army XP, but whatever. So I got more recon for these, on these guys. On um, grenades, we like to burn things. What if we did this? Someone's nest, huh? So they went down in peril decree. Salt upon wounds. Memory of the Empire, look. Sadly. Interesting. Not bad for them. Well, if we do this. They immediately start attacking us. Let's see if we can actually hold here at all. How are we looking down here? They're looking decent down there, actually. Forcing the attack. 28, 22, 29, 22, I should say. 3, 4, don't start dropping now. A lot of this is going to be a lot of micromanaging and whatnot, and this will help as well. Over here, I'm a little more worried, uh, but we'll see. I mean, a lot of this is just. Oh, well, I guess we have more divisions now, too, that we can have. Oh, we got this one, too, huh? There you go. 25 divisions are not very good. So we're going to ruin our manpower and do this one. We're actually going to get rid of half of them. I'm going to use them to bolster uh, the ranks at several different locations. Well, I guess I'm not even using you. You know what? I want you. It's not for now. As long as Guster doesn't attack, we'll be fine. There you go, figure that out. Oopsie. Hurry up and get over there. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, overall, not bad. Uh, focus on Tronosphere, no. Weekly, weekly manpower goes down finally. Oh, that's different. 100 days. Interesting. That's, di that's different. 
Um, anything else? Stimulus? No, not really. So do all this stuff. Promote Amarantha Perez. Perez, an officer and commander of one of our raiding fleets, has done much to reform his group into a fierce naval force. He should be invited to help reform the whole navy in the same model. Uh, from a large families. In order to continue a project of state expansion, we must ensure similarly to state expansion the population of our nation. In addition to a growth uh, in fighting the aged men for armies, the baby boom will also serve as a major help to a growing in domestic industry. So the village notwithstanding without without their uses and increasing workers would naturally allow for the expansion of uh, construction. Savage Columbus factories. As of now, our industry is fairly well distributed throughout the lands that we hold. However, we must take into consideration the possibility that we may lose control of some portion of our nation and the industry within it. Well, such an eventuality must never come to pass. We must also safeguard against it through the use of state-sponsored factories right in the capital, overseen and guided by the Columbus himself. Oh, the Columbus Academy. Although our economic expansion is focused in over, inward overall, we must still guide our society by the measure of our rivals. If we allow our material methods of production to fall behind, our enemies may surprise us or surpass us in time. To this end, we must further knowledge to maintain and remain competitive. A uh, cadre of minds, Lord of the Columbus will assemble, seeking to advance the technological might of the nation and dominate the Caribbean trade. Given our considerable foothold on the Caribbean Sea, the Gulf of Mexico, and the lands adjacent, we must begin to consider how to best suppress our rivals using the advantages we have been given. Advancing our navy will ensure that it is able to maintain a degree of supremacy over its neighbors, choking the trade routes and spot lines. But unfortunately, this will be a very short episode. Well, but I'm glad to end it here for now. 79 divisions versus 80? Ah, we're roughly equal, even though they lost slightly more than us. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, though, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we do a lot of this war off screen and see where we'll end up next. Thanks for watching, have a tremendous rest of your day!